There are no boundaries for what is happening in America. It's an obesity epidemic. I'm here today with Dr. Christopher Joyce, and we're talking about obesity. Doctor, this is something that you see in your practice every single day. Tell us, how have things changed for you in the past five years in terms of the type of patient that you see and their overlapping symptoms? In the past five years, 10 years, 15 years, uh, unfortunately, Americans have gotten a lot bigger. And uh, with that, it's brought on a lot of medical problems, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. And with that, it brings on the heart disease and the strokes and the kidney failure and the, the, the knees hurt and the ankles hurt and the back hurts. Um, so that's been the biggest issue. Uh, we, today we look at uh, uh, an obese person and we're so accustomed to seeing these sized people that, that, that we think they're normal sized people and actually they're, they're obese. Look to your left and look to your right. Now look at yourself. And statistically, one of you three are obese. That is staggering. And the real number is 90 million adults. This is not overweight, which is 30 million Americans. This is one-third of Americans are obese. Let me introduce Dr. Lehman. Dr. Lehman, obesity, it's something that you deal with each and every day in your practice. So doctor, how have the surgical options changed from what was to what is? Well, bariatric surgery is not a new field. Um, we've been doing this one way or another for a long time, for several decades in this country. Um, and the main uh, trends have been towards less invasive techniques uh, and towards improved outcomes and improved patient safety. Uh, to that end, um, almost all the operations 30 or 40 years ago used to be done through a, uh, a large midline abdominal incision, an open technique. Whereas now, almost everything we do is done laparoscopically or through the minimally invasive techniques. So, Instead of making that big incision, we make several small incisions in the abdomen and we're able to kind of peek in through the keyhole instead of kicking down the door. So uh, the recovery is, as you can imagine, is much more brisk and uh, our outcomes are significantly better. We don't have the, the risks of all those big incisions. Isn't it amazing how many people look at weight problems like it is something that you should be in control of? After all, if you are overweight, isn't the solution to just eat less and exercise more? Maybe, but if it were that easy, why are people spending billions of dollars on weight loss products and programs? And why is there such a staggering obesity epidemic in the United States? Doctor, what are the options for fixing or healing an obese patient? Well, once uh, conventional means like diet and exercise and perhaps medications have, have uh, been exhausted, there are surgical options, and there's, there's four types of surgeries we use today. That would be the, the bypass, the, the bands, the sleeves, and the, the switches. Well, they have longer names, but those are the names we'll use for now for simplicity. Um, and they vary a bit. Uh, the reason there's so many choices is they all work in, in different means, and they have uh, certain advantages and disadvantages. Um, for instance, a band is, is the easiest of the operations, and with that, it has the least, uh, least chance of complications. Unfortunately, it has uh, the least uh, effectiveness in terms of weight loss. Then we have sleeves, which increases the uh, effectiveness of the operation with weight loss, uh, but the risks go up a little bit. And then after that, we have bypasses, where we have excellent weight loss, um, but that's at the cost of a little higher risk with the surgery. And then probably the biggest operation with the highest risk and, and perhaps the best weight loss is the, is the uh, switch. Um, so they vary quite a bit. Uh, we try to uh, explain all these options to the patients, and our philosophy has been to allow the patients to, to make the decision for themselves. In 2003, my son was getting married and um, I was very ill. And right after his wedding, we went to Mayo Clinic in Minnesota and they ran all kinds of tests in a three week period and told me that I needed a gastric bypass to live. One of my daughters is a doctor and we researched different doctors and hospitals and within three weeks, I was operated on because I had lymphedema very bad and if it reached the heart I wouldn't have been here any longer. 
But you know, as you start feeling better and you stop taking 30 pills a day and you start walking and then running and playing with your kids and that, it's worth every bit of it. What can a patient expect in terms of their results if they choose to do a bariatric surgery? Managing expectations in, in weight loss surgery is extremely important. Um, I, I think um, many patients uh, have an idea they're going to come in at a certain weight and, and finish up uh, looking very thin, more like a supermodel. And in reality, that's not what we see. Um, so managing expectations is important. And I, and I think that whole process starts preoperatively. We see about 50% of their excess weight disappearing uh, after a band with a bypass, about 80%, with a sleeve somewhere in between there. And uh, with uh, the bigger operation, the, uh, the switch, uh, it's going to be closer to a bypass. As far as getting rid of the medical problems, which, are, which is our main goal, uh, we see with a bypass about a 90%, 90 plus percent chance of getting rid of their diabetes, 80 plus percent chance of getting their high blood pressure. Almost all the patients will get rid of their high cholesterol. Almost all the patients will get rid of their heartburn. Their joints will feel better in most patients. Sleep apnea, asthma, that goes away. So um, as far as the medical problems, most of the medical problems will resolve after, after having surgery. I no longer have stress incontinence completely gone, which I had suffered for, for like almost 20 years. And if you know anything about that, you can't dance, you can't jump, you can't sneeze, you can't cough, you know, without having an accident. So, I mean, it was gone. I mean, I, I don't have any problem. I had sleep apnea. I don't have to use a CPAP machine anymore. I used to have to sleep with a machine because I'd stop breathing. Um, my joints, my knees, I can go up and down the stairs. I felt like I was inside this fat person that wasn't me. I was buried alive under all that fat. I like to dress up now, which I hadn't done for so long. I have one dress that would go for every event. And you hated to be invited to a wedding because it's like, oh, I might have to go out and buy another fat dress, you know. And when my daughter told me one time, she goes, how come you don't wear shorts to pick me up at school? You know, and that's one of the things that really made me realize how it was affecting my children, my weight too. Because I was embarrassed, maybe they were embarrassed by my weight. I tell Dr. Lehman, I go, you gave me my life back. And he almost started crying. You know, we both got emotional because it was like, I mean it. You gave me me back. I'm Kitty again. I wasn't for like 20 years. I was so fat. I was buried. But it's been really good. <laughs> Sorry. In terms of the post-operative experience, what does a patient need to do in order to be successful? Well, that's a very good question. Um, the a lot of, most of the success comes from what the patient does when they're not in the hospital. In other words, I always tell my patients that you know, the, the hard work of this is not done in the operating room, it's not done in the office, it's done at home, it's done in the grocery store, it's done at the gym, and it's done out when the patients go out to eat at restaurants. And all these things, you almost have to retrain your brain with regards to how you think about food and how you think about hydration. So um, we educate and then we over-educate just a little bit just to make sure that every, every I is dotted and every T is crossed. Uh, there's no miracle cure, or there's no magic bullet for obesity, but what we're doing is with surgeries, enabling them with a new tool that they can ultimately you know, defeat obesity for the, the final time in their life. When did I not have a weight problem? Since I was very little. I remember being teased constantly. You know, when I got into like the sixth and seventh grade, I would be outside and I'd be with a group of friends and then these boys would come up and go, why are you here? And I would turn around and go home. I mean, it was rough. I mean, I don't remember ever really being skinny. And I was afraid my kids were getting older. I was looking forward to grandchildren. I wanted to be around and be able to be a fun grandmother, not somebody that would, they would say, oh, I never met my grandmother. Last week I went to the pool that I would never do before. A couple weeks ago, I have a girlfriend that I went to high school with that always been a real small, petite. And we went shopping for the first time since I've known her for over probably 30 years that we shopped side by side at the same size, the same rack, and we were just giggling the whole time because we've never done that the whole time I've known her. Doctor, is it always a number on the scale or do your patients consider success something different than that? Well, most patients come into the surgery with some level of expectation and some goal in mind. Uh, I often try to set those before surgery, but sometimes it's a work in progress as we go along. So some patients will say, you know, I, I really would be happy if I lost 75 pounds or 
Um, you know, I really want to get rid of this diabetes, or my high, I'm taking four high blood pressure medications. If I got down to one, I'd be very pleased. But there's also the intangible and unmeasurable things, such as, you know, I can fit in an airplane seat without having to use the belt extender. I can, you know, go on the rides at the at the uh, fair instead of you know having to sit and watch my kids go on by themselves, or walk around the block with my grandkids and not get short of breath. I think those things are, are just as important as any measurable thing that we have to our patients. I decided to take control of my weight because I came to the um, conclusion that I was killing myself and I wanted to live a healthy older life uh, now that the kids are out of the house and we're empty nesters I wanted to make sure that I could enjoy that life with my wife as well as any grandchildren that come down the line, I want to be able to enjoy it with them. I got to a point to where I was 448 pounds at my highest. It has changed my life in so many ways. Uh, for one thing, I, am, I was a 62 in the waist, and I'm right now currently a 38. I could go and I could walk into any store and buy clothes. I could walk up and down stairs, I could run up and down stairs and not be out of wind. I've lost 110 pounds and that put me within a healthy weight range and that's something that the band was able to do for me without having to go into gastric bypass. Um, I went from wearing a size 24 down to a size 8. I, I just have a lot more energy, I feel healthier, I, f I feel better about myself in general. Um, I think that I'm caring more about who I am and what I look like and, and the type of person I am than what I did before. I, I think before I just I gave up, I stopped caring. We are almost the, uh, about the same size when we first got married. Um, I'm, I'm a few pounds more, and I think you're right around, uh, right right around the there. Same. So it, that was 22 years ago. And um, we haven't seen that since. And this has just been a breath of fresh air in the last couple of years. It's been fantastic. I, I think that if I had to talk to a, a couple where one person was naturally thin and the other person was obese, um, I would have to do the best I could to encourage them to support each other through this. Even if you're thin and you don't need the surgery, the health of your partner and the rejuvenation of that partner, their self-esteem as well as their physical ability to do things is well worth it. There's, there's nothing that can, is, comes close to that. <laughs> and when we got married, it was for better or for worse and um, in sickness and in health, and we've seen the sickness part of it. And this is gonna enable us to live that life fully and long. And just, I don't want to sh cut my life short because I am too big and my body is betraying me. So we took control of it and wouldn't do something, wouldn't do anything different at this point. It's just been perfect. The only question we ask ourselves is why we didn't do it sooner. We found young love again, <laughs> well, and old love, and whatever kind of love you want to say, but we found it, and it's been great. Doctor, if a patient is considering bariatric surgery, how would you advise them to proceed, both physically and emotionally? Well, I think the most important thing uh, that I would recommend for a patient considering surgery is to come in well-informed. In other words, take it, the initiative to uh, research bariatric surgery so you're a little bit more apt to be open to the ideas that are presented by the surgeon. And by that I mean there are a plethora of uh, websites that are available that offer a lot of information about uh, bariatric surgery and weight loss surgery. Um, but you have to be, again, you have to be careful where you get your information from and the sources that you trust. I always say that, you know, knowledge is power and that patients that are more educated, uh, they actually do much better uh, with surgery and they have, you know, much better outcomes because you know, they've done all the right things and they've really committed to the entire process. So um, we start the educational process long before surgery just to make sure that everything's fully understood and they can make the most out of whichever tool we give them. I also think it's important from an emotional standpoint to get some support from, from their family, uh, spouse, parents, children, uh, siblings, uh, friends, what have you, because it is a change in lifestyle and uh, um, there are perhaps some risks involved with, uh, with the procedure. So I think it's nice to have a support group uh, going into something like this. You know, for me the hardest thing was admitting that I needed help because to me it was a failure. I was a big failure that I couldn't lose this weight myself and oh my gosh, I had to have surgery to have it done. But once you start going through the program, you realize that you're not a failure, you're a winner. 
you've made the right decision and, and you're the one that's taking charge. You know, when people say, oh, the ban doesn't really work. You know, I had a friend that tried that and it, it just didn't really work. The ban works if you work it. It's a tool. And I'm really very fortunate to have the tool. My body had metabolized itself to a point where it was comfortable at 328 pounds, even though that wasn't a good place. For me, the only choice was having surgery. Knowing that, you know, that's the whole knowledge is power kind of thing, it was like this, this isn't really my fault. I mean, I know I did bad things. I know I had horrible habits. You know, I still have horrible habits. Those bad habits don't go away. I've actually lost in excess of 100 pounds six times in my life and gained it plus more back. I'm a band patient. I've lost to date 196 pounds. Um, I will be forever grateful to Dr. Joyce and to BMI for everything they've done for me. And that was the start of my journey. It was like something clicked off in my head and it was like, you're gonna do this. My goal when I started was to just get into what I called normal people sizes. Just so that I could go anywhere in the mall and go into any store and shop. Um, much to my amazement, I own a pair of size two jeans. And in a bazillion